Hi, I am Malika Chopra. Welcome to this conversation that I'm going to have with my brother, Ismail Kala. Um, we are so excited um, to welcome him to the Chopra app, the journey to well being. Of course, he is part of our family. I really mean that um, as uh, a teacher, as a friend, and as someone that we all look to for inspiration. So, Ismail, welcome. Thank you, Malika. Thank you. And, and you're right. I said that I am your Cuban brother. <laughs> so happy to be here and so happy to be welcomed by you, the Chopra Global family, and all these beautiful human beings part of the Chopra community. Well, we're honored to have you. Before we start, for those that may not be familiar, but I'd be surprised if they weren't, let me give a little bit about your background. Um, Ismail Kala is a radio and TV personality, motivational author, lecturer, and columnist. Um, more than 25 years in Cuba, Canada, the US and Mexico and anchors the show Kala on CNN in Espanol, um, where you've interviewed many, many people, heads of state artists and celebrities. I would love to hear more about your book, um, which is a bestseller in the US and Latin America. Um, but we wanted to really begin by welcoming you to the journey of well-being, which is a program that we've been doing on the Chopra app for this year. Every month we're featuring uh, friends and family uh, who bring some perspective on different topics. And the purpose of this month is actually purpose. Um, it's on, um, you know, really thinking about Dharma and our purpose in life. And I know that you have amazing stories. Um, right before we got on this call, you were discussing, um, actually even discovering the power of your voice. And so <laughs> we, we listened to your recording, um, the entire company at Chopra Global. And the chat was filled with messages saying, I'm crying, that voice is so powerful and then combine that with the content. So I just want to welcome you and actually to begin with, tell us how you became part of Chopra, connecting with my father and of course the journey that you've had. Yes, well, there is a before and after in Ismael's life. Before the day I met Deepak and we shared the same stage in Valencia, Venezuela. And, you know, I anticipated for months getting to the moment of meeting Deepak because I was so grateful for the many years that I followed Deepak and the messages and the meditations with Oprah Winfrey and all the recordings and books that I said, oh my God, this is going to be an amazing day. And then I said, okay, but how can I add value to Deepak's community? How can I bring something? Because I don't wanna say hi to Deepak and waste the opportunity of not uh, putting myself out there, you know, to become a bridge maybe for the Hispanic community. I know that he's already famous. He sold millions of books in Spanish, but I said, there is something that I can do to expand this wonderful work that has transformed my life. And then we met and I don't know how, but he knew briefly who I was because he said, I know, I know that you are the Larry King of CNN in Espanol. And I said, oh, you know me. And, and he said, yes, somebody told me that I was going to be sharing the stage with several other speakers. And uh, they, they showed me the lineup. And, you know, I asked about you. And I said, well, Deepa, thank you so much. You know, I, I follow you for so many years and you changed my life. And I know that a lot of people tell you this. How can I add value to you, for instance? And then I said, uh, um, for instance, the meditations that you are doing with Oprah, are you thinking in translating these meditations into Spanish? Because I would love with my team to be the bridge for the Hispanic community. And he said, you know that we already did it in Italian? And if we did it in Italian, why not do it in, in Spanish? I have a huge community in Latin America. And I said, yes, good. <laughs> and, then, and then he said, okay, give me your email, Ismael, give me your contact, and we'll talk to our teams to make this possible, to see if this is possible. In four months, Malika, we had the entire dashboard in Spanish, and we translated the meditations, and we were together, and we brought 
to the Hispanic world, like at least uh, four 21 day meditation challenges. And it was a before and after. It's amazing. And I think, again, you know, we talk so much about how can I serve and how can I serve in my unique way? And I think your story is um, so actually illustrative of just thinking, how can I serve in my unique way? And you brought mm -hmm. Um, his uh, voice in a local language in Spanish uh, to your community. And um, I think, you know, have helped just spread the word um, meditation, inspiration, and which is why we're so excited um, to have you as part of this program. Um, we spent together time at the Seven Spiritual Laws workshop uh, in February and that was a great time together and now to have you here. So I'd love for you to share a little bit about um, your thoughts. Um, you know, the theme is purpose uh, and Dharma and how can having um, your sense of purpose um, and living your truth help you in life um, and help you serve? Well, I have to say that I don't know how you choose that well and to the point that among the 12 months and topics of journey into well-being, I was assigned to purpose because actually that resonated with me so much because I feel that when I was younger, I didn't know what purpose was in life. I was living, but I was living through social conditioning. I was living through social expectations. I was living through my inherited um, history or story of my families, maternal and paternal families. I was living in fear because I thought that, and my fragmented mind thought that because I was coming from a family with a schizophrenia and coming, coming from a family of suicides, like several suicides, all my family was in this process of, you know, feeling the stigma and the taboo, and they passed it on into the new generations, children. So, you know, when I was young, like 20, 25, I really didn't know my purpose in life. I thought that I had an idea that I had to choose a career and that I have to do something like work. But work for me was kind of a synonymous of a struggle you know, like lucha in Spanish. So to tell you the truth, I found purpose and I knew about purpose when I read the seven spiritual laws of success and the law of Dharma. And that changed my entire perspective that life was much more than what I kind of considered a social programming that you had to follow to comply with society and external expectations. So I started aligning my life with purpose. And you know the, the, the interesting thing, Malika, about this program is that living our purpose is totally unique. It feels okay. different for every person on this earth because your purpose, my purpose, probably is unique as we are. And that's why I, I am totally like so thrilled and happy because through the five sessions that we have for this month, we will explore what to do to really reach alignment, learn how to love, how to live, how to evolve, talking about energy, not only intellectual meditation about purpose, no, talking about the energy that we feel when we connect with that current of wellness and abundance and service and satisfaction through what we do through talents and gifts that every single human being possesses. And so, and one, I want to point out that you uh, shared that you had never recorded something in English before. And again, I just want to reiterate how <laughs> when our group listened to it, um, you moved people to tears. It was really remarkable. So um, we again- I, I, have, I have to say that, you know, like, my collaboration and, and friendship and mentorship, because I, I look up to Deepak as a spiritual father and, and, and as a mentor and, and as a friend, uh, changed my life and actually my self-esteem. Because I was telling you before we started this conversation in public, 
that because I started learning English when I was already 29 years old and I left Cuba, my original country, my native island into Canada, I went to Canada, to Toronto. You know, I always said, I know that I, I speak English, but probably is not the language that I should use for professional purposes. You see how limiting beliefs we yeah. kind of, you know, have. And then when I did the first meditation in Spanish, I discovered the power of my voice, thanks to Chopra, using the voice for guided meditations, because Chopra told me how to do it and how to meditate before guiding the meditation and how to use my tone. So he taught me how to do it in Spanish first. And then when you asked me about doing it in English for the journey to well-being, I said, I've never entered my own studio to record anything in English. So thanks to you, now <laughs> I know that I can do it and I feel so confident that I can do it again. Well, and I think that's what we're trying to do, honestly, with Chopra and again, why we are so grateful for you because I think you also are demonstrating that sometimes finding your purpose is a journey. Um, finding your purpose sometimes takes you out of your comfort zone um, and you know it requires risk, but also has their real feelings of fear um, and you know uh, self doubt. Uh, and I've gone through that in my own journey um, of purpose and uh, figuring out dharma because for me I was brought up always being told that each of us has a dharma and a unique offering. And to be honest, um, it was something that really stressed me out. I did a TEDx <laughs> talk on that specifically, which was like, I didn't know what my dharma was or my purpose was. And for me, I was like, I'm just a soccer mom. Like, I, that's what I do. I drive my kids around. And, and it was um, in a conversation with Eckhart Tolle where, mm -hmm. you know, he really reminded me that we live our purpose in every moment um, and doing what we are doing with um, a sense of love and inspiration and purpose um, leads us to the path of discovering our unique gifts. Um, so tell me a little bit about meditation in your life, because uh, I'm just, I'd love to hear your story about your first meditation and how you've incorporated in that in your life. And now, of course, um, what you're doing with us. Well, I have to say that I wasn't successful at my first attempts meditating because I, 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 I was kind of pushing myself too hard to get to Nirvana or Samadhi and, you know, all these blocks and mental uh, myths that a lot of people tell you, oh, meditating is just like having your mind, you know, in, in, in a peaceful void and, and blank. And then I said, I'm not getting to that point because my mind is still thinking. And, and actually, when I met Deepak, that I offered the opportunity of being the voice, I said, Deepak, um, let me ask you some questions about meditation. And then we had a session of questions and answers, and I addressed all my doubts about meditation. And he said, false belief, false beliefs. This is not true. This is a false expectation, Ismail. Do not think that you are going to control your mind. Just become a silent observer, a very loving witness, silent witness of what's going on. No labels. And then I said, this sounds much easier than what I was trying to do before. And then I went to the Chopra Center and I was part of two or three different retreats and I practiced primordial sound meditation. And I was giving my own personal mantra. And then it became a very easy process just to follow up and to train my mind just to get to the point of feeling relaxed by being observed, not judged. And that's what I explain to people. I say, you know, sometimes it's our own expectations about the process and our impatience what blocks the magic that it's feeling that space of silence and that space of profound connection with your heart, with your energy, and become one with the universe. I couldn't even close my eyes when I started meditation because when I was a teenager, I had nightmares. Mm -hmm. I was medicated. You know, I, I, I already mentioned that my father was a schizophrenic. And when I was 15 years old, I had a treatment. I was medicated because my mom thought 
that I was kind of following the path of that condition. She brought me to a psychiatrist and the psychiatrist said, well, due to the personal medical history, we have to medicate the, you know, the youngster. And I started taking pills. And then, you know, I had kind of a very troublesome uh, early adolescence. So when I started doing meditation, closing my eyes was an issue. Yeah. And then I did it like one minute and I opened my eyes and it felt safe. And then I closed my eyes for two minutes and it was a training that now, now the problem is the other one. It's <laughs> sometimes I don't want to open my eyes because I feel so great in the experience and, and it's awesome. And I have to say that, you know, it's, it's part of the training that you, uh, the Chopra Global, do for a lot of people. So everybody, everybody can meditate. Yeah, and I, I do so much work with children. And I think you just described actually something that's so important is we always want children to feel safe um, and closing eyes for some people doesn't feel safe. Uh -huh. um, and so the process, and that's the thing, it is a journey and it's a process. And, you know, the you articulated so well saying that, you know, expecting some nirvana and, you know, that first moment is not going to happen. It's really the process of acclimating your body and your mind to connect uh, with spirit. So in this program that we've done together on the Chopra app, and one of the reasons I'm so excited about the Chopra app is that um, how you described having, you know, this Q&A session with my dad um, helped kind of reassure you on some practices and answer questions. Every month we're having different programs, he's speaking, but for this program in particular, um, we have a number of tools, we have a complimentary workbook, but do you want to share a little bit about maybe was there a favorite meditation or favorite exercise that you recorded? Well, actually, you know, <laughs> it's so difficult for me to pick one because I was amazed at the content and you actually gave me the opportunity to kind of, you know, make it very personal and to put into my own words some of the concepts. But I think the first meditation for me is very crucial because it's answering the question, what is my purpose? Because we are left to think about our job or career, but our purpose encompasses so much more than that. And Dharma doesn't always uh, have to do with your work, our work, because Dharma is the universal truth, as Deepak says, and the nature of all reality. So purpose or dharma connects you with what makes you transcend and serve from your higher self. So when we say that to reach enlightenment and the first meditation is about understanding for our commonalities in life, what is enlightenment? So it's living my purpose. It's, it's allowing myself to create a space for expansion. And that for me, was the most interesting thing or worthy for dharma and purpose. It's expansion. You know, it's to renounce mediocrity and popular thinking. It's to honor a life full of evolving potential in service and pure joy. So for me, that first meditation, you know, sets the tone for the exercises and for the other sessions because sometimes we relate too much work and career as dharma and purpose and life is much much more than that it is and i think one of the um, lessons that i think hope people get out of this whole program is sometimes it doesn't uh, and i know i used to feel pressure on this that dharma and pur purpose had to be magnificent and you know changing the world and had to make such impact but I think this program and all the programs on the app really are what we talk about which is um, self-transformation um, for global healing and global uh, change as well and the boy does the world need that right now. Um, Ismail do you want to tell us a little bit about your book? I'd love to hear more about it. Well I have in English only one book and it's the book that we are self-publishing, actually, through Amazon.com, because I said, well, you know, this is a wonderful global opportunity. And I only have one of my 11 books published in Spanish translated in English. 
So it's called The Power of Soul Listening. Mm -hmm. And it's a beautiful book that I wrote in 2011 and I finished in 2015. But then now, because you gave me this opportunity, I revisited and re-edited the entire book with new additions and new concepts because I realized that the Ismael that authored the book many years ago now has evolved. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's practically a new book. It's a different book than the one that I wrote and that we published and it was my first bestseller in Spanish. And it's, I, I think it's an amazing book because it's very personal. It's, it's a very intimate dialogue through the story of a human being, his struggles, his expectations, and how meditation, mindfulness, emotional intelligence, all these things that I didn't receive in school and that people you know, talk about self-help and sometimes it's not something that they think it's great literature. And I say, well, thanks to that kind of literature, I saved my life. Education didn't save my life. Education gave me knowledge, but made me an orphan of wisdom. And self-help made me a wise human being, made me somebody that could put the priority in knowing myself. As Socrates said, and Shakespeare said, you know, centuries apart, know yourself. And that's exactly the power of soul listening premises. You know, listen to what's in your mind that I call the piñata, because I said that the mind is a piñata, because Latinos, we celebrate birthdays with a piñata, you know, and, and we kind of break the piñata and kids fight to get what's inside the piñata. Well, our minds are piñatas. Our father, our mother, society, religion, science, politics, economy, economy, they put everything inside our piñata. And sometimes we think we are free, but we are really just prisoners. So the book is an exploration of what's the inner voice that really represents my profound truth and my inner being. So I love it. And I'm so excited that for the first time, I can put the book out there for the world in English thanks to you. Oh, so beautiful. And I just want to, uh, for those that are listening, you know, when I think about what we're doing at Chopra, I really think about it as what is my father's legacy for the world. And that's why I took on this role of CEO of the company after so many years. Um, and I truly believe my father's legacy are going to be the people and the teachers like yourself, Ismail, who, you know, are, are taking the inspiration and the knowledge and then finding your unique voice um, to make impact on the world. And I think you can be one Malika, of our... Malika, <laughs> imagine, imagine if that's a profound truth that you know what happened when I transitioned from CNN in Espanol you know, it's so funny because Deepak, when he met me, he said, oh, so you are the Larry King of CNN in Espanol, because I did the exact format that Larry King did for 25 years in English. And you, you know how they call me after I made that transition and I started doing mindfulness and leadership trainings and meditation trainings. Oh, you are the Choprita. Choprita. <laughs> you are the Choprita of Latin America. You are the Deepak Chopra of Latin America. And I was so like, well, you know, I don't know if I have multiple personalities. I was Larry King, now I'm Deepak Chopra, <laughs> but I took it as a compliment because that's exactly what I thought is the legacy. He's been my mentor. He's been my, my spiritual master. I'm part of his legacy as so many other people that he has affected positively and the entire organizations that now you lead. So. It's, it's exactly like that. And, and that's why we are really honored. Um, we're very grateful. And we couldn't be more proud um, of, you know, the work that you are doing. And so, again, as we end this, I just want to welcome everyone to uh, 
the Chopra uh, journey to well-being. It's been on our app this year, but you can join anytime. But this month, of course, um, Ismail Kala is leading um, the meditation and the theme of purpose. Um, such a perfect topic for him, and you can hear why. And we just want to welcome everyone. And again, just thank you uh, really for all the work that you're doing for bringing um, Chopra uh, to the Spanish speaking world. Um, and then also um, venturing out into the English uh, side as well, um, because I think, you know, there may be um, your voice uh, <laughs> definitely resonated um, with our our team and I can't wait to share it with the rest of the world. Thank you so much, Malika and the entire team. Uh, you made me feel like family, so that's what I feel. I'm family. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.